Hey y'all, it's Bobby with Hollow Point Firearms and uh, I'm back after a while. Uh, I've been really, really busy at work. Uh, been really hectic uh, schedule around here with uh, shooting season getting ready to kick off. Uh, the Hollow Point defensive shooters are getting ready to kick off their season of, sh our season of shooting. And so I've uh, been really busy getting everything together with that. But I haven't forgot about you guys and uh, I'm back for video two of uh, the homemade pontoon build. All right, so uh, basically what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm just going to uh, I'm going to play a few uh, some some video for you of us kind of working on it. Um, I know when I watch YouTube videos, I like to see uh, some work being done just so I can kind of get an idea of how things are being done. So I've got some video footage I'm going to show you guys, and uh, you might hear me talking, explaining some stuff in there about what I'm doing and so on and so forth. It's some footage that I've been shooting as we're working on it, um, but I don't want to bring you guys a bunch of just little video clips of certain things, so I'm trying to wait until I get enough done that I can give you a substantial video with some good stuff in it. Um, so uh, just sit tight and watch these few little clips, and uh, then I'll give you a tour of what we've got finished right now. All right, so uh, here you go. Okay, so the, uh, the object here is we've got our, uh, our 55 gallon drums, which are our pontoons. Um, now what we've done to uh, prevent rust, because inevitably 55 gallon drums, they're going to rust. Now most pontoon boats you would just leave in the water, you drop them in in the spring, leave them in, pull them out in the fall before they let the lake down. But in our case, what we're going to do is probably take our boat out of the water every time we use it, just like if it was a regular fishing boat. Um, so what we've done though to combat, to help combat the, the rusting process on the 55 gallon drums is we're actually using a uh, Rust-Oleum professional grade, Rust-Oleum professional grade paint. All right, and we've chosen to use Hunter Green. Uh, this stuff is super uber thick, like uh, really thick and I think when it dries it's going to make a nice hard layer on the... Uh, on the actual barrels themselves and so uh, one it'll help prevent um, the rust and two it'll also look good because um, we can't have a redneck looking boat it has to look good so anyway what we've done is we've sealed up the bung holes uh, with Teflon tape and they've also got a good rubber seal on them we've tightened those down and then filled in with the uh, enamel the paint and uh, I'm, I'm uh, pretty positive that we're gonna have a good seal on those and so now our next step is we're waiting on the paint to dry before we weld these barrels together. But our next step is we're actually using two inch wide, eighth inch steel strapping. And what this strapping will do is we're going to wrap it around the barrels in different places along the pontoon. Now anybody that's ever welded a 55 gallon drum before knows that welding on a 55 gallon drum is really tedious and it's really delicate because the, the metal is so thin. All right, so what we've decided to do is use these two inch stra uh, straps of, uh, of steel and we're gonna wrap, actually wrap the barrel in this steel and then close it with a bolt. So it's inevitably, it's like a uh, huge hose clamp, steel hose clamp. And we'll wrap the back two barrels or the, the back barrel with two straps one at this lip and one at this lip and then we'll put one right in the center of the middle barrel and then we'll put two more on the front barrel. Now on the front, the front strap will actually work because we're going to uh, fabricate a cone to go on the front here and that'll give us something to weld that cone to to help part the water, to break the water. And then it'll also be, the strap will be used for weld points for our framework that's going to actually go on the pontoons. All right. So uh, I pretty much told you guys all of that to show you, we're going to show you how to make one of these straps uh, here in just a second, but I wanted you to understand what we're actually doing with them. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get started making a strap. All right. So what we've got here is we've got this, the two inch strap and it's in its, um, you know, stock. And they come stock 20 foot sections, you know, you can get them in 12, 10, whatever. We bought 20 foot sections and uh, to help make it easier for us to haul them, we went ahead and had them cut down to 80 inch sections. Now we're not using the complete 80 inches, but if you take 
20 feet, you know, it's 240 inches, so it gives us three 80, 80 inch sections. Um, and uh, just makes it easier to handle, easier to work with. The first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to remove, um, we're going to go ahead and cut off seven inches. All right, so our overall length of the, the steel band is going to be 73 inches, which is right at about the actual circumference of the, uh, the outside diameter of the barrel. So it's pretty close. We're cutting them just a little bit short and we're going to bend a lip on them so that we can actually run a bolt through them to torque it down like a hose clamp. All right? So that's the reason why we're cutting it off here. This is uh, Nate. He is uh, one, of, uh, one of the guys I work with and uh, I have his permission to use him in the video. So uh, that's for uh, you Adler creeps. So it's going to bend back out a little bit. So you want to have a little overkill on your bend to make it a little bit stronger in the long run. So 
that's the bands, and uh, we'll go from there. I think I should turn it a little bit. Hey. I think you can, as long as you don't rub it on the wood, you can turn it all the way through where the wood touches it. You know what I mean? Because yeah. the more you can paint now, the less we got to paint, less we got to paint later. All right, guys, so this is the pontoon that uh, we've got completed here. And uh, you can see that uh, we've got our bands on there that we were making. Um, and they basically just act like hose clamps. But uh, wrapped around and then uh, tightened down with a bolt. Uh, just used a, uh, a 9 16 bolt and uh, uh, a lock nut and a couple of washers on there. And uh, that way, if in the event that the one of the barrels went bad. You pop a couple of bands loose, bend them down. You would have to cut the weld uh, where the barrels are welded together, but um, it would be a lot easier to replace one barrel that way as opposed to replacing the whole pontoon, um, cutting it loose from the frame and so on and so forth. Uh, also, uh, another thing, another change that we made is we added an, another barrel in here. All right, so we've got four barrels uh, in length and then uh, about a quarter of a barrel up front. I'll show you in just a second. Um, and then you can see the reason why we use the bands is because we were welding the frame directly to the bands instead of to the barrels. Because the barrels are so thin, uh, it's hard to weld on them. So instead what I did was we made the bands and then we're welding our frame to the bands. Uh, the the uh, the frame that you see here is actually 
we're going to call, I'm calling it the actual, the pontoon frame, all right? Uh, and it's a frame to help attach the pontoon to what I'm going to call the deck frame, which will be the, the frame of the boat, um, so to speak. So anyway, what I've done is uh, we've got the barrels, we've got the four barrels, then we've got the straps on there, you know, I've got one at the end, and then what I did was I put two on the, the back barrel, and then one on the two center barrels in the very center, and then two on the front two bar or the front barrel. And uh, I think that's gonna hold pretty good. So we've got a total of uh, six, six of the bands. And then I'm using eighth inch thick, three quarter inch uh, right angle steel. And then uh, weld, just put it in place. I used a little space or a little block of wood here. Um, just to give me the spacing that I want on the uh, on the frame just so what I do is I, I set it up there I center the uh, the block over the bung hole back here and then set clamp my first uh, bracket on there with a pair of vice grips tack weld it and then I'll go and uh, tack this one on and then what I do is just walk it down through there and tack it as we go so anyway, uh, you can see that I've had to, you have to cut out quite a bit, even using the bands, you have to cut through quite a bit to fit over the uh, expansion joints on the barrels. Um, and that's just to allow it to set flatter and closer. Now I noticed originally in my design, these metal plates here weren't in it. Originally it was just gonna be the two pieces of angle iron. Uh, and I noticed that when I started notching out that much of the angle iron, for to fit the barrels that it took away the strength of the angle iron. It's really flimsy. So what I did was I went back and uh, these are actually, this is just actually the two inch uh, by eighth inch thick uh, scrap pieces of the flat, the flat stock that we were using to make the bands. So when we cut them off, this was what was left. They're about six inches long. And uh, what I did was I just marked everywhere where there's gonna be a cross brace or a cross beam for the decking. And uh, I laid one right in the center. So now two, that will give us a uh, more solid platform to weld to when we put our decking on there, or our, our deck frame. All right, so we've got those all installed there. And you can see I've grinded it off nice and smooth. And then we'll go right up here to the front and I'll show you guys what we got going on up here. So what I did on the front was uh, I took a barrel and cut it in half and then I laid an angle on there. Um, I can't even tell you what angle that is because all I did was just made some measurements and then drew a straight line, used a rope and laid a, a strung a rope across it, kind of like a chalk line basically, and then traced it, cut it out with a side cutter. And then um, this on the front is just a piece of 18 gauge sheet metal and I laid it, uh, laid the, clamped it to the barrel the best I could and then put me a bead all the way around it and then went back with a grinder and grinded it off uh, to make it round, all right? And then on the front here, I took a piece of, another piece of the three quarter inch angle iron and uh, ran it down the front dead center. And then I went ahead and wrapped it underneath a little bit here to help protect if we pull up on, uh, on the bank or something like that, help protect the barrel, keep it from puncturing. And then you'll notice this is painted with the green paint that I talked about in the earlier footage. And then this was a test spot here. We're actually using a rubber, uh, rubberized paint um, that's like an undercoating for your car, like the chassis of your car. And uh, what we'll do is end up putting two coats of this. The whole front will be covered here. And then uh, what we're going to do is go about halfway high um, all the way around underneath. So it'll be uh, plenty watertight. And then uh, my biggest concern isn't water actually getting into the pontoon because each barrel is individually sealed. Uh, I just want to add another layer of rust protection, preventing the rust uh, from occurring. So that's the reason for the, uh, the extra paint there. All right, so let's give you another view here of the pontoon finished. Um, like I said, we just still got to paint. We need to paint all of our bands and the steel. Um, but I'm probably not going to paint that until we get the deck frame on and welded so that way it doesn't interfere with the welding. So that one's done. Uh, the bands are on this one, but they are 
the, uh, the framing on the top is not put in place yet. So uh, working on that actually right now. Um, but we've got that much done there. And then uh, just show you guys some of the other stuff we've got here. Got a couple of old, uh, old boat seats here. Um, they actually used, they'd set on, they set on a little box frame and then they fold out flat. Uh, we're going to disassemble those and make four individual seats out of them and uh, instead of having the fold out seats. So we'll have those four seats there, clean them up. And uh, then we've got our motor here. Uh, actually, what we're going to go with is a 70 horsepower 1977 Johnson. Um, got a really good deal on it. So we picked that up, got the seats, the motor, and uh, steering controls, all the stuff, the bezel and everything that goes with the steering controls. We got three gas tanks for it. Um, there's the cover. Also got a tack and a uh, Speedo for it. And uh, what else did we get with it? Oh yeah, all the controls here for the motor. So uh, picked all those up for a really good deal actually very surprised for the price that we got those for. Uh, I'm going to give you guys an update on the pricing because I know originally I told you guys that our budget was $400 and as long as you don't tell my wife or uh, Nathan's wife I'll tell you how much we spent so far and what we're looking at. Uh, when we originally planned it we did have a $400 budget and uh, neither one of us have built a boat before. So uh, we kind of, you know, <laughs> uh, didn't really know what we were talking about as far as the budget goes. Now, compared to what our budget is, we really haven't done that bad. Uh, the barrels we picked up for nine bucks a piece. I think I mentioned that in the first video. All right, so we don't have that much money tied up in that. The steel that we've purchased, you can see all the steel that's on the, on the pontoon now. And then we've got all this down here. That's our frame pieces. For our decking and all that stuff and uh, then uh, all that jazz the motor all the parts that we got we decided kind of to make it into it we figured if we're going to build a boat we might as well build a good boat uh, so we we figured that with the four hundred dollars we could probably build a raft uh, we're not going to have much of a boat so after doing all the figuring and everything we come up with eighteen hundred dollars uh, is about the price that we're going to end up in it at um, we did price. I know some people are going to be like, $1,800, holy crap, you can buy a boat for that. Actually, you can't buy a boat, for, a pontoon boat for that. We tried. Anyway, we tried to uh, locate an old pontoon boat, one that we could fix up and, uh, you know, just kind of redo it, rebuild it. The cheapest piece of crap pontoon boat that we could find that had good pontoons on it was about four grand. Um, and that was without a motor. All right, uh, we were going to still have to. We were still going to have to purchase a motor. We were still going to have to uh, replace the decking, the carpet, uh, probably reupholster some of the furniture, and uh, so we were. You know, you're thinking probably five or six grand. Um, so I'm thinking eighteen hundred dollars for this one. It's going to be nice. It's going to have lights all over it for uh, to be used for bow fishing if you want to use it for that. Um, it will have a steering console with, like you've seen, a tack and a speedo. Also going to have switch console. It'll have marina radio on it, um, a depth finder. I mean, we're talking 1800 bucks. This thing's going to be completely outfitted. All right, so we'll have a boat and the, uh, and the thing. Now, that's, like I said, that's what we come up with. We'll see how close we stick to it, but uh, that's what we're at right now. That also includes a trailer for it, too. So I think we made out pretty good. And so far, it's looking really good. Um, and as long as it floats, <laughs> I'll be happy. Otherwise, be a long trip to the scrapyard and a lot of years of I told you so from our wives. So anyway, guys, that's about it for right now. Sorry to keep rambling on, but I know you guys have been waiting patiently on an update video. So here's your update video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, probably be a couple more weeks, like I said. The Hollow Point Defensive Shooters, we're kicking off our uh, 2012 shooting season. So that's going to keep me pretty busy. And uh, I'll try to get you guys some videos of that stuff up. If you're not already subscribed to the Hollow Point Defensive Shooters channel, which is separate from my channel, even though I run it, 
um, you can go to my featured channels down below and uh, go ahead and subscribe to that because that's where we'll be uploading the videos of the uh, shooting and so on and so forth there. All right, so uh, until next time, guys, get out there, shoot some guns, be safe. Most importantly, have fun. See you guys later.